The South African technology innovation is going well, and we are putting more effort into that particular area, which is the key lever we have to improve the productivity levels in South Africa and also turn the declining trend. An update on our technology. I think the significant issues for the quarter were the fact that we now drilled um, four holes skin to skin, which really means that we've now got very close to being able to say that we can extract all of the reef. We backfill all of these holes and in the backfill we put um, measurement devices which enable us to test exactly what the backfill reaction is to this drilling. And I'm glad to say that the backfill is reacting exactly as we planned, so the engineering part of the backfill is working well and it's now allowed us to be able to devise a drilling sequence because the backfill takes about 20 days to cure, so you need to design a specific drilling sequence in order to ensure you maximize the use of that backfill. We delivered two new machines mm -hmm. underground. Um, they're both drilling. Uh, we have a new site established at Tautona, which is our first pucker production site. Um, that machine is drilling, and you can see the picture of that on the bottom right-hand side. It's um, Backfill, is, uh, uh, backfill equipment has also been established, and that's the photograph you see on the top. What's going to be interesting is our first um, very thin reef machine has been delivered um, at Great Naligua, and we're drilling with that machine at the moment. And this is our attempt to turn an uneconomic reef into an econ economic one by using this drilling technique. The South African Technology Project is making uh, significant inroads. They're already into their 25th drill hole, and they've now got machines which are drilling even the narrow uh, veins in some of the uh, South African ore bodies, and we have extracted over 50 kilos uh, uh, from these test sites. And the last time we met, we were around 30 kilograms of gold. Um, by using RC drilling, we've had a breakthrough during the quarter. We've now drilled 150 meters length of hole at eight meters an hour. The challenge now is to extend that hole to 300 meters um, at the same rate. What you're going to see but when I report against this on the next court is another two machines worth of drilling, but you'll also start to see the influence of drilling in different kinds of reefs, which surely will be lower grade. Obviously, they're much thinner holes, but we expect them to go through much quicker. Yeah. This is not mechanization. I think it's important to understand this. Yeah. Mechanization is where you're using large jumbos to go down and extract the ore. That yeah. is not what we are doing here. Yeah. What we are doing is we have looked at the resource base, and when you compare the reserve and resource base, there's a big gap. Mm. Primarily, it's around areas which have been mined out, yeah. which we have left for support, and we can't actually go there and mine using conventional drill and blast technology. The second area is the high-grade shaft pillars. You can't use drill and blast technology there again without causing seismicity. So the focus on technology is basically going to areas where we have mined out and have moved back or shaft pillars to extract the gold which is still there. So effectively, it's stepping up production because if you do nothing, the South African gold production because of the grades continues to decline. And you've seen that in the last eight years. This tends to arrest that decline and basically improve it going forward. And that's really what it does. It's not the mechanization of the bulk mining. Going below the current infrastructure level is on the cards, but this is certainly taking priority to going further down at depth. What this would allow you to do is if you can get this to scale, you can employ that technology going deeper because you're not blasting the ore body anymore. You're using effectively your reef boring technology to extract the ore, and it doesn't cause seismicity at that depth. Uh, Martin Plumer from Mining Weekly Online. Um, I just wanted to go back to the South African Technology Project. We hear more good news on it, more holes being drilled, but I wanted to get an, a grip on the econ economics yeah, of yeah. this. Is this a commercial proposition? Yes, it is a commercial uh, proposition. To, for it to be commercial proposition, the three areas or four areas where we've got to work quite hard is one is reducing the drilling time, where we have made huge progress. The second area is on our backfill technology to build it at scale underground so that we don't move material and uh, 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 from the surface down to the uh, uh, bottom. The third area is for it to be able to come through of scale, we need to be able to tackle both the narrow uh, uh, reef ore bodies and the relatively wider reef ore bodies. So the first machine is currently drilling the narrow reef. And the last area is we always felt that there needs to be gap between the holes. We have not tested until recently whether we can uh, drill them right adjacent to one another, and that's proved successful. So all of these contribute to the economy of scale. 
Uh, as we said, our objective still remains getting 10 to 20 percent of our production from South Africa, from the use of technology, not where we are currently mining, but in respect of areas where we have pulled out with shaft pillars and mined out areas. So we are on the way to it. On the back of the uh, uh, fact pack calculation, it is still economical, but we need to get bulk in there. And that's where the focus is.